Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to tell you about guide wavelength. Guide wavelength is indicated by lambda g. Till now, we have seen the parameter that is cutoff wavelength. What do you mean by cutoff wavelength? What do you mean by cutoff wavelength? Cutoff wavelength is nothing but that is the maximum wavelength that a wave can travel in the waveguide. So beyond that lambda c, any wave cannot travel in the waveguide. But this lambda g is different from that lambda c. And there are actually three types of parameters in terms of this wavelength in the rectangular waveguide. So one is cutoff wavelength, what we have seen. Cutoff wavelength. Cutoff wavelength indicated by lambda c. And another one is guide wavelength. This is what now we are going to see. Guide wavelength. Guide wavelength indicated by lambda g. Another thing is free space wavelength. Free space wavelength. Free space wavelength indicated by lambda naught. These are three actually three different wavelengths that are existed in and outside of the rectangular waveguide. See lambda g is nothing but now we are going to see what is lambda g. Lambda g is nothing but it is the wavelength related to the wave that travels in the rectangular waveguide. Guide wavelength. The name clearly tells that it is the wavelength of the wave traveling inside the rectangular waveguide. Okay. And it is clearly saying that free space wavelength and the wave travels in the free space. That means without any guiding that if any wave travels in the free space that is having a free space wavelength. Cutoff wavelength is nothing but it is the just it is saying it is having the maximum limit. Okay, it says about limit. Cutoff is nothing but limit. So it is the maximum wavelength beyond which the wave beyond which the wave cannot travel inside the rectangular wave. That is the maximum wavelength. Okay. Now what do you mean by guide wavelength? Let us see the definition of guide wavelength guide wavelength guide wavelength is indicated by lambda g already lambda is nothing but wavelength so g is referred to a guide the definition of this guide wavelength is it is defined as the distance traveled by the wave in order to undergo a phase shift of 2 pi radians in a waveguide Okay, it is defined as, I will write here, it is defined as the distance traveled by it is defined as the distance traveled by the wave In order to undergo a phase shift of in order to undergo a phase shift of how much? 2 pi radians. Complete excursion. 2 pi radians. What do you mean by 2 pi radians? 2 pi radians is nothing but complete excursion of a sinusoidal signal. 2 pi radians in a waveguide. Definitely you should mention this in a waveguide. Okay. Without this waveguide, if you don't mention this waveguide, that becomes a free space wavelength. Okay. So now we are talking about the wave which is traveling inside the waveguide that is related to guide wavelength. Uh, suppose take a, rect a rectangular waveguide. Take a rectangular waveguide. Okay. Now completely we are studying about rectangular waveguide. Once the rectangular waveguide concepts are over, we will move on to the circular waveguide. Okay. So rectangular waveguide, already we know this is breadth A and this is width B. Now the wave which is traveling inside the waveguide like this, okay, from here to here. From here to here. This is 
lambda g. The wave which is traveling inside the waveguide with the two pi radians excursion is nothing but the guide wavelength. Okay, so the free space wavelength lambda naught is different from this lambda g. Free space wavelength is nothing but see here the wave which is bounded in the rectangular waveguide. Suppose any wave in the free space is having an excursion like this. This is having the lambda naught. It is nothing but free space lambda naught. It is having it is no uh, nowhere related to any guide or a rectangular waveguide. Just freely it is going in a free space. Okay. Now <coughs> let us see the relation among these three uh, parameters. The relation among three wavelengths, what I said earlier, three wavelengths, what are they? Lambda C, lambda naught, lambda G. That is, lambda G is equal to lambda naught divided by 1 minus lambda naught by lambda c whole square under root. Okay, this is the relation among these three parameters lambda c, lambda naught and lambda g. Okay, we will have a separate uh, a video for how we have got this uh, relation lambda g lambda c and lambda naught okay these three are related uh, remember till that way uh, uh, these three are related in this uh, formula so lambda naught g is equal to lambda naught by square root of 1 minus lambda naught by lambda c whole square okay now let us assume if lambda naught is less than less than lambda c what do you mean by lambda not less than less than lambda c that means the cutoff wavelength lambda c the cutoff wavelength lambda c is very high compared to the free space wavelength cutoff wavelength lambda c is very high compared to the free space wavelength then what happens this value is more this value is less sorry this value is less lambda naught is very less compared to lambda c that means we can approximately neglect this value because it is very less compared to the one this factor is minus subtracted from the one okay so as this factor is very very less we can just simply neglect this second term so once it is neglected one minus this value so it is neglected and the square root of this one is also neglected. So what we can do? We can simply equate lambda g is equal to lambda naught. Not exactly equal to. It is approximately equal to lambda naught. Okay. So if this condition is satisfied like lambda naught is less than less than lambda c. Then lambda g is approximately equal to lambda naught. Consider the second case. If lambda naught is equal to lambda c, what happens? That means the free space wavelength is equal to the cutoff wavelength. Okay, free space wavelength we are not changing, cutoff wavelength may be varied depending upon the properties of the waveguide. Okay, uh, the cutoff wavelength is equal to free space wavelength, nothing but this factor becomes 1. So 1 minus 1, it is 0, and lambda naught by 0. Lambda naught by 0. Anything by 0, it is infinity. So, lambda g becomes infinite. <coughs> lambda g becomes infinite. Okay. That means the guide wavelength which is traveling in the wave, the wave which is traveling in the rectangular waveguide is having the wavelength of infinite. Infinite wavelength. Consider the third case. If lambda naught is greater than greater than lambda c lambda naught is greater than greater than lambda c that means the cutoff wavelength is very narrow very less compared to the free space wavelength then what about this relation this value numerator uh, numerator value is very less compared to 
sorry denominator value is very high compared to denominator so as lambda naught is very high this 1 minus this value becomes negative okay 1 minus of this value becomes negative so as this value is negative and it is under root it becomes imaginary so lambda g becomes imaginary okay so these are the three possible conditions when we have assumed the relation between lambda naught and lambda c but what about the conditions you see here if lambda naught is less than less than lambda c lambda g may be equal to lambda naught if lambda naught is equal to lambda c lambda g may be infinity but in the third case lambda naught is greater than greater than lambda c then lambda g becomes imaginary in the among these three conditions is this last condition will not occur okay so if lambda naught is greater than greater than lambda c the wave cannot propagate in the cannot propagate in the wave guide as lambda g becomes what happens it imaginary Okay, so these are the uh, three different uh, wavelengths and this is the uh, history related to guide wavelength. Thank you.